from the road of an automotive diagnostic robot from the future to discover new problems and new vehicles and to go where no other robot has gone before. This robot was recently called to a shop having problems diagnosing a 2002 Ford Explorer with a 4.0 liter engine that was experiencing a surging idle. The shop had already replaced the TPS and the ECM but was still getting an erratic TPS signal. There were no codes stored in memory and all the grounds and power feeds seemed to check OK. When I arrived at the shop, the technician went over all the work he performed on the vehicle. He knew the TPS was the problem, but he could not reason with its erratic reading. I hooked up my scanner to see what was actually going on. When the truck was started, the idle flared up and slowly came down. The TPS seemed normal, with no apparent change. Then, all of a sudden the TPS reading on the scanner began to show a very unstable reading that deviated plus and minus 300 millivolts. This caused the learned throttle to switch radically from closed to part throttle. The engine began to race because the ECM was uncertain where to put the idle and if the engine was at closed throttle or not. This was a very odd problem. What was I to do? Was my robotic brain capable of this? At this point, I decided to put an oscilloscope on the TPS to do a reality check. A scanner is a good tool, but you must understand that it is only a food processor in gathering information that the ECM sees or thinks it sees. There could always be a possibility of corrupt data within the ECM. This is why it is always important to put scanner information against the actual value of a sensor using a graphing meter or scope. I hooked up my multi-channel scope unit to view the TPS sensor. I was stunned by the amount of noise on the signal line. Where was this coming from? Was there another signal line following the same pattern with the same frequency? I decided to lay down a game plan for myself to get to the root of the problem. I knew that EMI or electromagnetic interference on the TPS signal line could cause the TPS signal to be erratic and the ECM was unable to process it. I also knew that the main sources of most EMI was usually caused from injectors, ignition coils, solenoids, motors, and relay coils. Basically, any ECM driver grounding a coil device was a culprit here. The signal line I chose to compare with the TPS was the ECM reference ground. Usually you can find a lot of normal noise resonating on the grounds. I sometimes use these noise indicators for diagnostic purposes to view primary coil triggering when this modules make primary wiring inaccessible. The one thing you need to know is these noise levels should not keep the grounds from returning to their rest points of about 100 millivolts or less. If the grounds cannot maintain their rest points, then you have some weak grounds on hand. By viewing the TPS signal against the reference ground, you can see some similarities in the noise levels. It seems that when the coils and injectors lift upwards, the TPS signal line never came back to rest. By pulling up both injector banks and the ignition diagnostic monitor or tachometer signal lines and doing a comparison with the reference ground, you can now see the relationships in the noise levels found on the signal lines. The TPS, however, seems to be too close for comfort. Somewhere within the ECM harness, the TPS signal line has become an antenna to the noise levels within the system. Finding the area of concern could be a real labor-intensive task. We already know the path the TPS signal line takes by viewing a diagram. It leaves the TPS sensor and follows back to the ECM. The only cure here would be to do a visual inspection of the harness, and if nothing is found, then perform a bypass surgery of running a new wire from the TPS to the ECM. At this point, I instructed the tector on a new wire. 
We again viewed the TPS and referenced ground signal lines, and we were pleased to see a very stable TPS signal line, and a car, that ran without a search. You can even see the normal noise levels on the TPS line, along with proper resting of the signal at 1.1 volts. The fix here did not require much repair time, due to the path we took. It still is always a good practice to take time out to do a visual check on the harness, just in case the harness reveals multiple wires damaged within the area that could later result in other circuit failures. I'm sure that there may be others who would rather wear the cape and endure the extensive hours to sift through an entire harness and become the Robotech hero. Out here in the real world, people may not pay you for all that time you invested. Try giving them a bill for 8 hours of diagnostic time and see how much they think of you as a robot or otherwise. Now give them a bill for 2 hours to do a bypass surgery with a guarantee of only the circuit you fixed and the problem at hand. You will keep that customer for life. And your robotic image flourishes. This robot will now power down for a recharge. Will I dream? I don't know. See you next time.